I don't know if any of you caught Natalie Portman on BBC World Service in Arabic recently, but she said some crazy things. Recently we had the Israeli Jewish state law that made you more superior than me because you're Jewish and I'm not. How do you feel about that? It's racist and it's, there's, nothing, um, there's nothing else to say about that. So Natalie Portman is saying Israel's basic law is racist. But is it any different to any other country's basic law? How about we compare it to the Palestinian one? which no one's criticised in 15 years. Israel is the historical homeland of the Jewish people, so this is one of the clauses everyone got angry about. I guess because it says Israel is the historical Jewish homeland and doesn't mention Arabs. But what does the Palestinian basic law say? The continuous attachment of the Arab-Palestinian people to the land of their fathers and forefathers, on which this people has historically lived, is a fact. OK, I see how this works. If the Palestinians say it's their historic homeland, that's cool. But if the Israelis say it's their historic homeland, that's racist. I guess that's because people like Natalie apply double standards to Jews that they don't apply to others. So in their mind, it's okay for Arabs to express a desire for self-determination, but it's not okay if you're Jewish. Because for Natalie, that would be racist. So what else did she think was racist? The flag of the state is white two blue stripes near the edges, and a blue Star of David in the centre. OK, so that's not really racist, it's a flag, but is there anything like that in Palestinian law? The flag of Palestine shall be four colours as approved by the PLO. So there is something like that. And what was all the fuss about declaring Jerusalem our capital? When the Palestinian basic law says, Jerusalem is the capital of Palestine. Why didn't anyone complain when the Palestinians said Jerusalem was their capital? I don't get it. And does the basic law say anything about religion? Islam is the official religion in Palestine. The principles of Islamic Sharia shall be a principal source of legislation. And the official religion in Israel is... Oh wait, it doesn't say anything about that. That's because Israel is a secular democracy. I think it's safe to say that while the PA is governed by Islamic Sharia law, Israel is definitely not governed by Talmudic law. I mean, Tel Aviv is the gay capital of the world. Sorry, I got a little carried away there. So you might remember when an Israeli Arab MK declared the Israeli parliament racist for putting Hebrew above Arabic as the official language. Well, guess what the Palestinian basic law says. Arabic shall be the official language. But there's no mention of Hebrew. I guess that would make sense as the Jews were ethnically cleansed from that area and there's a separate law that bans them from citizenship. Meanwhile, in Israel... Hebrew is the language of the state. And wait for it, Arabic has a special status. It has a special status because Arabs are a protected minority in Israel who have complete equality with the Jews. As an example, all the street signs in Israel are in Arabic. Arab MKs can even speak in Arabic at Knesset. The haters are going to hate. So you can see how the two laws are nearly identical. But when Jews express their right to self-determination, the world calls us racist. And when the Arabs do the exact same thing, the world supports them. And it was, it's wrong, and I disagree with that. Well, I disagree with you, Natalie. In 1947, UN Resolution 181 refers to a partition of the land into two states, an Arab state and a Jewish state. If you support a two-state solution, you would naturally support the existence of a Jewish state and an Arab one, not two Arab states. The point is that when my family lived in Arab lands, we were dhimmis, second-class citizens, and today, Jews are still banned from many Arab lands, including Palestinian areas such as Gaza. Meanwhile, in Israel, Arabs enjoy equal status and equal rights, as defined by the Declaration of Independence and the nation-state law. This is Lemore from the Israel Advocacy Movement. Make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube, like us on Facebook, and definitely follow us on Twitter. Thank you for watching.